it's in the news lately that the uh, there's a bunch of uh, families who have kids with autism have brought a lawsuit against the makers of vaccines. They're concerned that the vaccines are the cause of their autism. Is that true? This is a very important issue. There is no data, none whatsoever, in multiple studies with multiple experts looking at the studies to suggest at all that there is an association or a cause of autism by vaccines. It's very dangerous not to immunize your child. We know that there would be thousands of cases of very bad diseases that have not been in the United States for years if we didn't vaccinate our children. So please continue to vaccinate your kids. Um, the studies are very, very impressive that there is no cause of autism by vaccines. If we didn't vaccinate in a, a relatively mild case of German measles, if it got exposed to a mother who was pregnant and never had it, is there a disease these kids get called congenital rubella? There certainly is. Uh, up until 1968, when the vaccine for rubella was developed, there was an epidemic of rubella every eight years. Most institutions then for children who were mentally retarded were occupied by kids suffering from congenital rubella syndrome. And how many cases were of congenital rubella last year? I don't believe there were any cases of congenital rubella. So we went from a lot of cases to none. Correct. We have eliminated congenital rubella syndrome from our society, and that is an incredible accomplishment, only because of an effective vaccine. We used to be worried about kids are getting croup, and pediatricians used to get very, very nervous about kids' croup. They used to ask the kids were holding their throat. There's a thing called epiglottitis, which looks and smells like croup, and they can die. They have to get sometimes straight and intubated, and we don't hear it anymore right. because we vaccine against the disease HIV. Exactly. Uh, a very effective vaccine also called the HIV vaccine, Haemophilus influenza B. Haemophilus influenza influenza B caused epiglottitis, but it also caused meningitis. It was the most common cause of bacterial meningitis, which would result in death or hearing loss and multiple other things. So that vaccine has been incredibly important to making our kids healthier. And we used to hear about whooping cough on little babies. We do occasionally see a case. We rarely ever hear any kid dying from it, yet the death rate in the 30s was 2% of all kids who got whooping cough under six months, and yet it's a disease that maybe it's a little bothersome, but we can control it. And now we're seeing the older kids and others of vaccine to prevent the adolescence. Is that true? Exactly. Uh, pertussis is a terrible disease. Uh, when children used to get it as very young babies, as you've heard, they would die. Uh, so preventing pertussis is critically important to keeping young babies alive and also, we now know, because of giving the vaccine in older kids, we can prevent it from becoming a problem in adolescents and in young adults. We also know that those countries where they've seen a lapse in their pertussis vaccine, there's been a tremendous increase in pertussis again, which has killed babies and made for a lot of disease in kids. So it's very important to continue to keep your child immunized uh, against pertussis. I remember as a kid, parents were afraid to send kids to camp in the 50s, afraid of a disease called polio, and yet it's gone. There's no cases in this country. Isn't that true? It is absolutely true. We have eradicated polio from this country, which is an incredible accomplishment, considering back in the 50s and 40s and 30s, many, many children had polio, including one of our presidents in the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So it's important that the polio vaccine, which is now given as a shot, that has made it even more effective, and whatever potential cause of someone getting polio from a vaccine, which you may have heard of in the past, it's not possible from the new vaccine given, being given by shot. And measles, which is a horrible disease, 10 days of 105 fever, we hardly hear about cases. The estimation if we don't vaccinate, we'll get 4 million cases, is that true? That is true. Measles is a deadly disease. It's not just a little rash and a little fever. The kids get pneumonia, can get forms of meningitis, encephalitis. Uh, it's a terrible disease, and children died from measles routinely. Uh, when I was a young pediatrician, uh, before the vaccine was developed, 
we would see cases of measles in the emergency room every week and some of those kids were very sick and I had one or two die during my time so that it's an extremely important disease to prevent and we've been very successful in preventing it again with timely vaccinations. There's even a thing called panspirosing encephalitis which is so like saying the brain becomes cottage cheese from measles. Right. We learned unfortunately the hard way that when kids had gotten measles as young children later on as adults all of a sudden they would get this terrible neurologic disease and die from it that was a result of having had measles as very young children so by preventing measles as young children we are also preventing uh, pan's uh, subacute sclerosing encephalitis varicella chicken pox uh, we're now starting to give a second dose of the vaccine to young kids because we still have about 800,000 kids getting it a year now the young kids may be not so bad, but as you get older, it can be devastating, especially if you're on steroids or immune compromise. Is that true? Absolutely. Varicella or chickenpox, people used to think is a benign disease, but it's not true. Uh, kids would die from even chickenpox um, as a regular uh, regular occurrence throughout the country. Uh, we have now prevented chickenpox from occurring, and we also know that we will prevent it in older kids by probably giving a second dose of the vaccine. There's also another intent by giving chickenpox vaccine, which is that chickenpox flares up in old age or if there's a drop in their immune, and that is called herpes zoster. And that's a devastating thing for older adults to get. We are very, very positive if we prevent chickenpox from happening as young babies, then adults will not get herpes zoster. That's a big deal. So the actual concept you should get this is vaccines have revolutionized medicine. We have wiped out a lot of diseases and minimized them. And if we start immunizing, they do come back, don't they? These illnesses that we now prevent with vaccines are around us. We're just fortunate to have excellent ways of preventing our kids from getting it. But once we let go of our vigilance in vaccinating our children, those diseases will come back. And those diseases are terrible diseases, which is why we've developed the vaccine in the first place. Those countries around the world that have allowed that lapse in vaccinations to occur have seen those diseases come back. We must prevent that from happening by staying vigilant and vaccinating your kids. We do know there are some complications with vaccines. Years ago, the, uh, the pertussis vaccine, there were some concerns. They made a better vaccine. The manufacturers of carefully checking for complications. They're always improving it, but we right now have no indication that it is causing the so-called epidemic of autism. Is that true? That is, it is very true that the vaccine industry is a very responsible industry. The American Academy of Pediatrics, the Institute of Medicine, uh, the CDC, all very responsible organizations within our society to keep us safe. They have all concluded without a doubt that there is no cause of autism from vaccines. There was some concern that mercury, which had been in small amounts included as a stabilizer in vaccines, might be the culprit. Mercury was taken out of vaccines uh, a number of years ago. We have still seen the increased numbers of children diagnosed with autism occur on a year-by-year -year basis. We must get to the bottom of what causes autism, but it is not vaccine.